Water is really important. It's the most important nutrient in the body. Why is this so important? Because it helps with every cellular function. Life on earth would not exist without water. I'll get into the dosing of water and how much water we all need to drink on a daily basis later in this video. But the most important thing is I wanna talk about the sources of water that we consume and then the sources of water that we should not consume. Many of you think you're drinking healthy water when you consume water out of a bottle. There's lots of reasons to not be doing this and I'll get to that later in the video. Many of my patients are using reusable water bottles which is actually an improvement from the disposable water bottles but it's also really important what you're putting in the bottle and where that water comes from. So before we get into the sources of water, let's talk about how much water one should be consuming on a daily basis. The water content of our body actually changes over a lifetime. So infants have the highest water content at around 70, 75%. Adults have about 50 to 60%, and then older adults have about 45 to 50%. The content of the water in our body changes as we age. Another thing that changes over time is your body's ability to tell you when to drink water and that drive for water itself. And that is detrimental to every cell in the body if it becomes dehydrated. Think about the battery in your car. If those cells inside of the battery go dry, guess what happens? The battery doesn't fire. Same thing with your cells. If your cells get dehydrated, they're not gonna be able to communicate as effectively as a well hydrated cell. So how much water should we be drinking? I don't have a prescribed amount per body weight as some people do. It really depends on the conditions in which you're living. So if you're exercising more vigorously, if you're sweating more, obviously you're gonna need more water. If it's winter time and you're in dry air from the furnace, you're gonna need more water. And same with the summer, as you sweat more, you're gonna need more water. So how much water do we actually need? You want to urinate approximately every three to four hours and the urine should be a pale yellow. And that's the best indicator that you're actually well hydrated. If it's clear, you're drinking too much water. And is that a problem? Absolutely. If you drink too much water, you're actually gonna flush out some of the minerals from your body that you need to retain for that cellular health. If you're not drinking enough water, those cells are gonna get dehydrated and your urine is gonna have a dark yellow color to it. So for most adults, we need somewhere between two and three liters of water a day. And that also depends on level of activity, sweat, and all the things that I mentioned earlier. So my daily habits include taking water to bed. Why? Because I'm actually in bed seven to eight hours a night and I'm getting dehydrated. So I'll have the water when I go to bed. I'll have some sips before I go to bed. If I wake up in the middle of the night, I might have a little bit more. But the first thing I do when I wake up and get out of bed is I finish that glass of water. Why? Now I'm starting my day in a hydrated state. Often people go downstairs, they get a cup of coffee. Guess what? That's a diuretic. What does that mean? You're losing water from the intake of caffeine and the water that's in the coffee isn't sufficient to overcome the loss of water that actually you're inducing with that caffeinated beverage. So drinking a glass of water first thing in the morning is the best thing, but that's a great way to start your day. Then throughout the day, I'll have my water and I'll consume that periodically. And again, I'll, I'll monitor what the color of my urine looks like and the frequency of the urine to make sure that I'm well hydrated. So now that you're drinking enough water, let's break down the sources of water that you should be consuming. Many people buy these recyclable water bottles, and this is a problem for many reasons. So if you read the label on this, it says purified water. Dasani is another example. It's a Coca-Cola product. It's purified tap water. So basically you're buying municipal water that's been filtered. That is a problem because one, it's not a good source of water. Two, you're also getting microplastics. And this is very cheap plastic. As you can see, I barely crushed that. This has been exposed to heat in a warehouse. Guess what? There's plastic in the water. And then every time you unscrew that thread and screw it back on, guess what? It's got a plastic thread. So all that plastic, as you basically unscrew that and put that on your mouth, now you're gonna get those microplastics in your body. On the other hand, you could find a water bottle like this. It's a little more heavy duty. I can't crush it as easily. So that's a lot harder. So that's a harder plastic. There's going to be less leaching of plastic, but still some into that water source. And the cap is actually a lot hardier. If you have no other choice and you need to drink from a water source like this, the best thing is take the cap off. You can wipe the cap with a cloth, 
pour that into your reusable water bottle, and now you're not getting exposure from the microplastics of the screw. The greatest source of microplastics from water bottles is actually the screw cap, because every time you screw that on and unscrew it and you put it up to your mouth to drink, you're getting a small dose of microplastics into your body. That's something that most people don't think about when they're using their reusable water bottles. So most of you probably have similar water bottles to these, and we have plastic, uh, which is the least favorite, but still better than the disposable water bottle. We have metal, which actually is favorite over plastic because we have less exposure to the plastics. And the best, of course, is glass. But for convenience, metal is actually often preferred because this is not going to break. The problem is I've yet to find a water bottle that does not have plastic threads. Some of them have completely plastic threads, but others are a mixture of, of materials. And the problem is that every time you screw that on or unscrew that, you're gonna get a little bit of microplastic on the outside of the thread. Easiest solution, you can just wipe it right where you're gonna drink so you don't get the microplastic. And then another solution is they do make special lids that actually have a pop top. So you can just pop that top and you're still drinking from plastic, but you're not screwing that thread on and off every time you drink out of that bottle. In conclusion, the best is either the metal or the glass. And then the ideal is a pop top so that you're not getting those microplastics every time you screw on and off the cap. So most people fill their water bottles with tap water or they might have a Brita filter or they may have a filter on their refrigerator. These are really inadequate for removing harmful substance, substances that are found in city water. What do we find in municipal water? Lots of things that you don't want to have, including heavy metals, breakdown of pharmaceuticals, including all the drugs that people consume or flush down their toilet. And we also are exposed to other chemicals and things that are not actually removed during the purification process at the water plant. We need to step up our game with a reverse osmosis filter or some sort of filter system that's actually going to be effective. There's different brands out there. Berkey is one brand that's actually quite effective and they actually do all the testing on their water. There's also other brands like Ophora and a whole host of other types of filtration systems and you need to find what is best for your situation. We actually have a reverse osmosis system here, so let's go check it out. So this is an example of a reverse osmosis filtration system. It has two stages. It has one stage that is a carbon filter and then it has a second stage which is a very impermeable membrane that actually filters the rest of the water before it goes into a holding tank that then is dispensed into your sink. So these systems are great for removing fluoride, heavy metals, pharmaceutical agents, but the problem with RO systems is they remove all minerals as well. And these systems actually will deplete the body of minerals, especially when you're using these in cooking. So for example, if you're actually steaming vegetables in RO water, because it has no dissolved solutes, meaning there's no minerals in there, it's actually going to leach those minerals out of your vegetables that you're steaming. So now you're actually not consuming the healthiest vegetable that you could because now it's going to be in the water. So using an RO system is a good way to remove many of the toxins that are actually coming through in the municipal water source. However, you have to make sure that you either have a remineralization stage or you add minerals back to your water. One great way to do it is you can add a pinch of pink salt or sea salt into your water, or you could actually use a power pack, which is basically trace minerals plus some other nutrients like magnesium and vitamin C into your water, and that's gonna help bring that pH up to about 7.0. The most basic filtration system is a carbon filter. And this might be something like a Brita filter, or they have a carbon filter on their refrigerator water line that's filtering the water to some degree. This is not as effective as an RO system because it doesn't use a pressure gradient in order to help filter more things out of the water, but it's better than actually just drinking straight from the tap. But the ideal would be actually sourcing from an artesian well. Artesian well water is water that has been filtered down into these deep aquifers and it's filtered through rock, gravel, silt, and sand. And it takes out essentially all the bacteria it actually removes most of the iron from the water. It removes chemicals from agriculture and a variety of other things as it filters deep into the earth. Then once it's sitting in that big aquifer under the ground, it actually is absorbing calcium, magnesium, and other trace minerals 
helping raise the pH to about 7.0. That is the ideal pH for water. Think about artesian well water as a giant filtration system that's had years to actually filter down into that deep aquifer and then absorb those minerals over years, over hundreds of years to provide the best source of water for us. How is that different from just straight well water? Well, most wells that are dug in the United States are very shallow, meaning their depth is about 100 feet, maybe 250 feet at the most. And an artesian well is generally about 2,000 feet below the earth. So it doesn't have the iron ore, it doesn't have the toxins and iron and other substances in that because it's been filtered so deeply into the earth. So let's talk about sourcing spring water. So these artesian wells are actually located all across the country. As a matter of fact, we have one just down the street from our office. It's called the flowing well. So basically an individual can just show up at that well, bring their vessel they're gonna collect their water in, and the water is literally flowing out of the spigot 24 seven because there's a natural pressure as that water comes out through the earth and you just take your vessel there, fill it up, take it home, and then you have it, and then it's ready to drink. There are companies out there that will actually bottle that water and then deliver it to your home. And that's the solution that I chose just from a time management standpoint. And so I have this artesian well water delivered right to my house. And then I use one of my reusable water bottles to actually take my water everywhere I go. And that's the solution that I chose. So let's take a look at what I have at my house. So here's the setup that we have at home. We have the glass jugs delivered. We store them in the garage, and then when we're ready, we just bring one of those jugs into the house. This is the system that we use. We just have a very simple crock. We set the glass jug on top of the crock, and then our family dispenses all their water right from the spigot instead of going to the faucet. We have fresh artesian water from Mountain Valley in Arkansas, which is delicious and refreshing. So the main thing to remember is make sure that you're hydrated, but not overhydrated. So that means you're urinating every three to four hours and it's a pale yellow color. The next thing is, what's the vessel that you're carrying around with you as you drink your water? Preferred is glass. Second would be a metal reusable water bottle. And third would be a reusable plastic water bottle. Make sure to avoid those cheap disposable water bottles uh, because those have very poor water quality and they're loaded with microplastics. And lastly, how can you optimize the water you're putting into those vessels? Invest in a good filtration system or invest in having water delivered to your home that's coming from an artesian well and know that you're drinking the right water. Cheers, stay hydrated. Hi, thanks for watching the video today. When I have time, I love to make these videos because I love to educate about health and wellness. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure and subscribe. Maybe check out this next video. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this one. If you have any questions you'd like me or my team to answer, please leave them in the comment section below. See you in the next one.